We gotta make sure you get revved up. We like to say that we're on the seafood and eat it diet. We really burn so many calories, it doesn't matter. Now we're talking. At six foot one, 183 pounds, Tom Luxinger swims like a shark, slicing through the water with efficiency and grace. My body type is kind of different. I have long limbs and a long torso, so I've heard that those are qualities ideal for swimming. I don't know if I necessarily believe them. Your pace work was fine. Your dive was fine. As a rising senior at UNC, Luxinger already holds numerous school records. Take your mark. Oh. And after three seasons at Chapel Hill, he has established himself as one of the school's most accomplished swimmers. But like all elite athletes, he's constantly striving to succeed at the next level. You're getting your dive and breakout down real well. For the second time in his career, Luxinger has qualified for the U.S. Olympic trials, where top swimmers from around the country compete for an opportunity to represent the United States at the 2012 London Summer Olympics. I'm seated sixth right now in the nation, and they take two. So you can do the math, I guess, because the difference between second and sixth place is a matter of hundredths and tenths. So I've been working pretty hard since this summer to drop those hundredths and tenths off my time. Every swimmer who qualifies for the Olympic trials is already competing at the highest level. But to make the Olympic team requires chasing down some pretty big fish, like Michael Phelps, winner of 16 Olympic medals. I try not to think of myself as a contender. I always try to think of myself as an underdog because that makes me work harder. So, you know, people tell me, you've got a shot, you've got a shot. And I'll be like, I don't want to believe I have a shot. <laughs> so it's a crazy time right now. Tom's a great guy. I mean, he brings uh, total commitment and he's a tough, tough racer. He's fully committed year round to his swimming and improvement. And there's not a lot more that you could ask out of somebody. Okay, those are better, Tom. UNC coach Rich DeSelm is a former swimmer who knows that in order to reach the wall first, you first have to log a lot of hours in the pool. At elite level athletics, you really don't have an off season, but it's definitely true in swimming in our sport. You have to be able to really have that long-term view and stay committed and hopefully stay uninjured. Rich is a great coach. He's taught me how to be a college swimmer, which is Something that I tell my freshmen now is that it takes a year to learn to be a college swimmer, to realize that it's not about how fast you swim in season, it matters how fast you swim at the end of season. In this sport, hundredths of a second can determine who advances to the next round and who goes home. One of the things that some people find so baffling about the sport is that in order to shave off those tenths, hundredths of seconds, it requires 20 hours a week in a pool, four hours a week of lifting, two hours of dry land. It requires a lot of work. At UNC Chapel Hill, swim practice begins at the very uncollegiate hour of 6 a.m. By 7.30, athletes are on their way to class, only to return to the pool a few short hours later for their afternoon session. I am a student. I do go to school. I go to class. I, was, I have an 8, 9, 10 on Monday, Wednesdays, and an 8 and 9.30 on Tuesday, Thursdays. Luxinger says keeping a tight schedule has enabled him to enjoy his college experience inside and outside the pool. You need to find a balance, and I don't go home after class and take a two-hour nap. I do homework because I want to be able to do things like go to sporting events and go hang out with my friends. The UNC swimming and diving team is comprised of about 70 male and female student athletes, some of whom are on partial scholarship, like fifth-year senior David McDonald. They have a different kind of discipline. It's artistic, it's gymnastics, above and into the water. McDonald is perfecting his three meters springboard routine, preparing for his own appearance at the 2012 U.S. Olympic trials. When you're up there and you're on the board before a dive, you're thinking about what the dive's gonna be, or you're just sort of zoning out. It's a really mental sport. So sometimes I'll think about what I have to do. Other times I'll try and zone out because if you think too much, you usually mess up. I've done diving most of my life. Stopped in middle school and then started back up in high school. And then realized it could get me into college. Kristen, very good. There's your takeoff. There's your come on. Very nice. D-Mac, that's a good takeoff as well, too. While he's thrilled to have an opportunity to make the Olympic team, D-Mac, as he's known to his teammates, says the trials will likely be his last competitive meet. Even if you qualify for the Olympics? I won't qualify for the Olympics. It's top two. It would be sweet, but so far my plan is to end on trials.
Even if Dimac's career ends at the Olympic trials, he will still be considered one of the most successful divers to ever walk the plank at UNC's Cori Natatorium. And after his final meet, either at the trials or perhaps the 2012 Summer Olympic Games, McDonald will join the ranks of recent college graduates competing not for medals, but for jobs. I just want to move on. <laughs> what do you want to do? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know yet. <laughs> Until then, he and his teammate Tom Luxinger have their work cut out for them. There's an old saying in swimming that goes something like this. If you have a lane, then you have a chance. I try to come into practice every day thinking about my competitor or thinking about someone that's trying to beat me. That continues to motivate me every day. And if I forget about it, either Rich or one of my teammates will tell me about it. 